Three years ago, I built this PC, an AMD Ryzen 3700X build with an NVIDIA 2060 Super. And for the past three years, I've been using the stock air coolers that came with it, and earlier this year, it caught on fire. Just kidding. I spent $1,000 on a custom water loop system to upgrade the air coolers that I've never had a problem with. Why, you ask, if it was working flawlessly before? Because why not? If you don't know, a water loop is a more efficient way to cool down your PC components by circulating water in a loop between the heat sources, kind of like a car engine. Our two main heat sources in this case are the GPU and the CPU. So our system today will comprise of a water block for the GPU, which has since been upgraded to the NVIDIA Titan RTX, thanks to my friends over at NVIDIA AI back in 2020, a water block for the CPU, a radiator and fans that'll be used to cool off the water as it runs through it, and the reservoir pump combo unit, which is what circulates the water through the entire loop. With one small caveat, it mathematically does not fit in the case. At least that's what they told me. But it looks way cooler than the other one. I really wanted it, so I mean, how hard could it be? And when I say water, it isn't actually pure water. It's this, a type of coolant made specifically for cooling a PC. And all of this was made possible thanks to Micro Center, the sponsor of today's video and everyone's favorite computer hardware store. If you do anything with computers or electronics or networking or communication devices, which is probably all of y'all, Micro Center probably has what you need. They have pre-built desktops, they have laptops, they have computer components, they have monitors, TVs, networking equipment, you name it, they've got it. Oh, and if you're one of the individuals who is lucky enough to have a Micro Center store near you, I'm envious because the closest one to me is like four hours away and I just wish that we had one closer. I can still get a lot of things online, but there's nothing quite like walking into the store and just being surrounded by all those PC components. It's, it's, it's a feeling like none other. They have an entire new lineup of business solutions. So workstation computers from Dell and Supermicro and new Supermicro workstation server builders. And a special deal for all of y'all watching this video right now, Micro Center wants to give every new customer a free 240 gigabyte SSD. And when I say free, you don't even have to buy anything. You just have to be a new customer. You have to purchase in store. And of course, it's just one coupon per person. I mean, that kind of makes sense. If that's of interest to you, check the link in the top of the description, get your coupon, and you'll be able to go to Micro Center and get a free SSD. And while you're there, walk around, take pictures, and send it to me because it's, I love seeing it. First things first, we must completely destroy the PC. Just kidding. We just need to remove the stock air cooler used to the CPU and the GPU in its entirety as the air cooler for this is built in. So yes, that means we have to take apart a $2,500 GPU. I'm kind of pooping my pants here a little bit. We have a handful of screws on the faceplate that we need to remove. I do plan on keeping this gold faceplate though, instead of the one that comes with the water block for two main reasons. One, it says Titan RTX and the other says 2080 Ti, which isn't as good. So, you know, gotta let them know what's up and that we're rocking with the Titan. And two, it just looks cooler but we needed to remove it in order to get to the screws that hold in the fan so we can remove the current air cooler and something to note here is that on the faceplate there are thermal pads that don't come on the new one not only that while there are thermal pads on the water block it doesn't include all of them for the titan rtx if i had to guess this is because the water block itself is made for the 2080 ti but since corsair doesn't make a water block for the titan rtx this is what we had to get since they're the same form factor just ensure you properly thermal pad what needs to be thermal padded just as I'm doing here and don't forget to clean off any existing thermal paste on the processor or anywhere else using at least 91% isopropyl alcohol. Once that's done, it's time to install the water block, the thing that's always so nerve wracking because of that thermal paste, but we did it. And then replacing the screws where you can, because I kind of found out that there were a couple of screw holes that didn't have threads on the other side. Again, probably due to using a 2080 water block on a Titan RTX, but enough screw holes that it should do the job. And then we had to do the same thermal padding and cleaning of the faceplate. And another problem arises, of course, due to me wanting to use the original faceplate. It doesn't quite fit in the one spot. Nothing a few swipes of the knife can't fix, which is what this clip should be, but apparently I double tapped the record button. I've been doing in the six years and still can't get it right but now it fits as you can see i just removed a little bit of material that was in the way replace the screws and as far as i'm concerned the gpu is done the cpu is much more straightforward the water block itself comes with an intel bracket on it i have an amd processor so i just twist the face off the water block swap the intel bracket with the included amd bracket then put it back together but being very careful that i don't mess up the thermal paste on the bottom 
It installs like any other cooler with direct pressure and slowly tightening each of the four screws. You'll visit each one about two or three times going from one diagonal to the other to ensure even pressure is being applied on that CPU. And now the real fun begins. Remember they said the reservoir pump does not fit in this case, but we kind of need to make it fit in this case. It starts with the radiator and helps determine how we position the radiator and the fans in comparison to everything else. With how the GPU fits, it makes sense for us to put the fans on the other side of this bracket here. So radiator, bracket, really cool RGB fans that you'll never see. Now, where do we put the reservoir pump? Right around here looks like a good spot. It could also be placed below, but that just doesn't look as cool. The dilemma here is not about space anymore because we've proved that we have enough space to make it fit, but how do we mount it in the space that we have? We can't put it down here unless we drill into the case, which isn't a problem, but again, it doesn't look as cool. Adhering or bolting the bracket onto this white piece may work. The recommended way of attaching this would be to a fan or to the radiator via a mount, but that doesn't fit unless... It fits, well, kind of fits. Due to the configuration, we only have two points of contact that are parallel to each other instead of four more secure points, so it's not very sturdy. And something I didn't think of was to turn the radiator bracket 90 degrees. It actually may have been able to work that way and would have saved us a lot of headache, but you know, to make myself feel better, let's just say it looks too close to the top of the case for our hose fitting. Yeah, let's, let's just pretend it wouldn't work and uh, move on. The GPU is what's in the way, and I have an idea. I had to make another Micro Center order for this, but it's definitely worth it. It's a PCIe riser for vertically mounting your GPU, which will also move it forward in the case in hopes to provide enough room for the reservoir pump to slide a little bit behind it. But since my case doesn't support vertically mounting your GPU, I had to get a little creative with it. A couple metal cuts here, drill a few holes there, including through the GPU plate bolt it in and we're good. However, it's pretty wobbly, so we'll need another contact point. And here it is, our custom spacer for the GPU to sit on. Yes, it's a block of wood, screwed into the case from below and the riser from above. And as they say, you just give it a little flick, <laughs> That ain't going nowhere. Well, I'm a little surprised our plan worked. The reservoir pump fits perfectly tucked right in behind the GPU with four points of contact on the radiator mount. Time for tubing. My plan is to run the tubing from the reservoir pump into the GPU block, from the GPU block into the CPU block, from the CPU block into the radiator, and from the radiator into the reservoir pump, which will complete our loop. I decided to go with the matte black tubing because while you can't see the liquid, I mean, it just looks so cool. And I also purchased the Corsair toolkit. It comes with a hacksaw to cut the tubing, a vise to hold the tubing while I cut it, a silicone rod to insert inside the tubing to keep the shape of it while bending, and a deburr tool to round off the inner and outer edges of the tube to avoid cutting the rubber gaskets in the fittings. A heat gun is also required to heat up the tubing to make it pliable enough to bend it. And so it began. Measuring and cutting and heating and bending and measuring and cutting and heating and bending and measuring and cutting and heating and bending and well, I, I think you get the idea. It wasn't without a few mistakes along the way. Some bending mistakes, some miscuts, not realizing that only one particular port could be used as an outlet on the pump and needing to rebend another piece to change that and that there's supposedly a proper inlet and outlet port on the CPU block, but I didn't bother changing that. Everything's connected. The loop is complete. Time to fill it and pressure test it. To fill it, I'm using this super convenient, awesome little bottle provided alongside the Corsair coolant by Corsair to fill it up. What could go wrong? Yeah, it's not a, not a very good design. In all honesty, I thought it was one complete piece, but apparently it's not. I tried to tweeze it out, the tweezers wouldn't fit. I tried to fish it out, but that obviously didn't work. So it looks like we have a nice souvenir that'll live in the reservoir forever. Thanks, Corsair. How nice. Luckily, it floats, though, and the melting point of plastic is much higher than this coolant should ever reach, especially coming out of the radiator, but it's still annoying nonetheless. At least I have a unique feature in my loop that no one else does, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's unique. Now let's run the coolant through the system without turning on the system, just the pump. I broke out an extra battery so I wouldn't have to unplug everything from the main battery, plugged in the pump's Molex cable into the battery's Molex fitting, and used the included jumper to jump the power back to the pump.
Refilling is needed, leaving a little bit of space at the top of the reservoir, and then getting some of the big air pockets out of loop by leaning the case this way, that way, around this way, okay. I let it run for a couple hours, and luckily no leaks. Time to put the PC back together. Making sure our RGB cables are connected to the IQ or the motherboard, all cables and such are properly organized, and that's it. The result, after it's all said and done, So that's it, my completed water cool loop with the GPU block, the CPU block, the reservoir that I wanted. It's beautiful. A few adjustments in the IQ to set everything up properly and everything is running just as it should with the exception of my secondary NVMe drive suddenly turning unallocated. This was probably operator error because this loop has nothing to do with the hard drives. So I guess I must have bumped it or, or something to cause this. I attempted to recover the lost data, but unfortunately I couldn't. So the previous benchmark video is unavailable, but luckily I saved the results to my desktop, but only the GPU benchmark. Unfortunately, on the left is when everything was air cooled on the right is now with the new water loop. And you can see that we gained about 10 FPS and our scores increased a little bit. Our min max FPS increased a little bit to over here, but that's not really what I'm worried about. This is the kicker. This number right up here It is the temperature for the GPU, the Titan RTX. And right now it's at 51 degrees Celsius. When we had it air cooled, it broke a about 85, 86 degrees Celsius. And when we ran this full benchmark just now with the new water loop, it did not break over 60 degrees Celsius. In fact, I think it peaked at 56, maybe 57 degrees Celsius. So we gained about 30 degrees Celsius of cooling on the GPU. And this is just after the benchmark, but it looks like we peaked out about 67 degrees Celsius. We could get that number down if we actually use the proper inlet and outlet ports instead of running it in reverse, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm not changing it. It's good enough. We had a few things to overcome, but we did it. The reservoir pump that technically doesn't fit in the case, we made a fit. And somewhere along the way, we made some makeshift vertical mount for the GPU. And I couldn't be happier with the results. Thanks for watching. I, it's good to be back. Thank you to Micro Center for sponsoring this video. And I'll see y'all here real soon.